Being 36 and unmarried, some might think you've missed your prime, but that's a narrow view of life. Kathleen, my sister, boasts loudly at a family gathering in our backyard about her wealthy, handsome, and intelligent husband, drawing curious glances from the attendees. Given our shared upbringing in this house, their puzzled expressions were understandable. Kathleen's dominance had been a constant in my life, with me always being advised to bear it silently as the elder sibling. However, I've reached my limit and decided not to suppress my feelings towards her any longer. My name is Amy Catherine, a 36-year-old who previously worked in medical administration. I left my job to focus on raising my daughter, who is now three years old. Being a stay-at-home mom has its challenges, but the joy of awaiting the return of my daughter from kindergarten and my husband from work is unparalleled. Amy, I'm home. Welcome back. My husband, Michael, greets us as he returns. He is a dedicated father and supportive partner, always ready to take on household responsibilities to ensure I get a break. Despite not working outside the home, he ensures I have time off from domestic tasks. Our daughter, Janet, adores drawing, particularly family portraits which she proudly shows her father. His praise lights up her face, a moment I treasure deeply. One day, a call from an unknown number breaks the routine. It's Kathleen, from whom I've been estranged for 12 years. She coldly informs me of our grandmother's passing and her wish for my presence at the funeral. Kathleen's call ends with a veiled jab at my lifestyle, suggesting she's been spying on my social media profiles. Despite the years and distance, Kathleen's attempt to unsettle me falls flat. I've found contentment and value in my life beyond societal expectations of marriage and wealth, cherishing the family I've built and the simple joys we share. Kathleen's parting words were laced with a thinly veiled hope for my loneliness in later years, her laughter barely contained. The image of her mocking expression from our past flickered in my mind, igniting a mix of emotions. Yet, before I had the chance to reply, she ended the call abruptly. Kathleen and I were raised in a family that was well-to-do, under the care of our strict grandfather and our compassionate grandmother. Our father, their son, always adhered strictly to my grandfather's directives, while our mother spent her efforts in trying to win his approval. Within these family dynamics, Kathleen and I were treated markedly differently, a distinction seemingly rooted in our physical resemblance to our parents. Kathleen, bearing a closer resemblance to our father, received favorable treatment while I, resembling our mother, found solace and affection from her and our grandmother. However, in a household dominated by patriarchal values, not being the favored grandchild or child came with its own set of challenges. Kathleen's desires were always prioritized, and I, as the older sibling, was expected to simply endure. From toys and hobbies to preferences and meals, Kathleen's wishes turned into commands that were rarely challenged, this pattern of favoritism was evident from our earliest memories, even when Kathleen was but a toddler. Despite our family's financial stability, my educational journey took a different path from Kathleen's. While she was sent to a prestigious private school, known for its exclusivity and the privilege it afforded its attendees, I found myself attending a local public high school. Kathleen's life was filled with privileges, including chauffeured rides to school and social gatherings with friends that I was excluded from. On one such occasion, stumbling upon Kathleen and her friends enjoying tea in the garden, I was promptly dismissed by her, a clear reminder of the pecking order within our home. Kathleen, spoiled by the constant indulgence, harbored a mean streak towards me, but maintained an angelic facade in front of our grandparents and father. Post high school, determined to carve my own path, I saved enough to enroll in a vocational school for medical administrative training. I found a sense of purpose in supporting both patients and medical staff. It was during this time that I met Brian, a promising young doctor in training at the hospital where I was employed. We shared several meals and felt a mutual connection, yet it seemed we were both hesitant to take the next step. During a rare visit home, I confided in my mother about Brian. Unexpectedly, Kathleen appeared. Normally, she would steer clear of any interaction with me, yet here she was, intruding on a personal moment. Despite our estranged relationship, this encounter with Kathleen was a stark reminder of the complex web of family dynamics and personal aspirations that defined our lives. My conversation halted as Kathleen entered the room, but to my surprise, she greeted me with a warm smile and expressed curiosity about my love life. Despite the hurt she had caused me in the past, I harbored a hope for reconciliation, 
longing for sisterly bonds to mend. Buoyed by her apparent interest and our mother's encouragement, I shared the story of Brian and me. Kathleen's support and my mother's approval filled me with the confidence to pursue the relationship further. And soon, Brian and I were officially a couple. Kathleen's request to meet Brian seemed like a sign of her maturity and a positive shift in our relationship, which I welcomed. However, the hope for a renewed sisterly connection was shattered. Our relationship, which seemed on the mend, took a devastating turn when Kathleen betrayed me by becoming involved with Brian, leading to the end of our engagement. The joy of Brian's proposal and our dreams of marriage were crushed when he abruptly broke off our engagement, leaving me bewildered and heartbroken. In an attempt to understand what had happened, I visited my parents' home, where I was confronted with the painful reality. Kathleen and Brian were together, their relationship now public, leaving me isolated in my shock and grief. Kathleen's call, devoid of genuine remorse, added to the hurt, leaving me to grapple with the betrayal alone in the rain, seeking solace on a park bench. This betrayal marked a turning point, forcing me to reassess the relationships that I valued and the trust I had placed in those closest to me. The pain of this betrayal was a harsh reminder of the complexities of family dynamics and the unpredictability of human emotions. Kathleen's revelation that she had pursued Brian for herself echoed the childhood memories of her demanding what she wanted, regardless of my feelings. I always wanted to meet someone like him first, she had claimed, reminiscent of her childhood tactics. Their secret meetings and eventual intimacy felt like a betrayal, magnified by Kathleen's cruel admission that she had only pretended to be nice to Brian to win him over. Her justification was simple, yet painful. She believed she was more attractive, and thus more deserving. The shock of this betrayal pushed me to make drastic changes in my life. I changed my phone number, moved out of my apartment, and even found a new job to avoid any association with Brian. Cutting ties with my family, including Kathleen, was a difficult but necessary step for my peace of mind. However, Kathleen's attempt to reconnect through social media, flaunting her supposed concern for me in a condescending post, was the last straw. Her actions reignited old wounds and spurred a desire for revenge within me. Despite my feelings, I attended our grandmother's funeral, honoring her last wish. Kathleen's mockery continued there, comparing our lives in front of everyone, including Brian, who couldn't meet my gaze. The introduction to Kathleen's son, Arthur, was a stark reminder of the life she had built with the man I once loved. Her comments about my being single and her flaunting of her seemingly perfect life with Brian felt like salt in an already painful wound. But the narrative shifted when my daughter Janet and my husband Michael arrived. Michael, the youngest director of the hospital where Brian worked, represented the success and stability I had found away from the turmoil of my past with Kathleen. The surprise and envy on Kathleen's face at the revelation of my husband's stature and our happy family life offered a moment of vindication. Kathleen's attempts to belittle me and showcase her own life as superior backfired, revealing the depth of her insecurity and the hollowness of her victories. My journey had led me to a place of genuine happiness and fulfillment, far removed from the shallow metrics of success that Kathleen cherished. This moment, though fraught with the pain of past betrayals, underscored the strength and resilience I had found in building a life on my terms, surrounded by those who truly valued and loved me. After deciding to make a fresh start away from my family's dynamics, I landed a job at a hospital where I met Michael. At that time, Michael was a dedicated doctor, impressed by my attentive care for patients and my ability to efficiently support the medical staff. Our relationship began earnestly, grounded in mutual respect and shared values. This was a stark contrast to my past entanglements with Kathleen and Brian, whose reactions to Michael's and my relationship revealed their surprise and perhaps envy. During a particularly revealing encounter at our grandmother's funeral, the dynamic of our relationships was laid bare. Arthur, Kathleen's son, recognized my daughter Jeanette from her popular YouTube channel, the Jane Leon channel, which boasted four Fen, chosen subscribers. His initial enthusiasm to befriend Janet was met with her candid rejection, highlighting her loyalty and protective nature towards me. This interaction prompted an outburst from Arthur, who blamed Kathleen for his disappointment, causing a scene that Kathleen struggled to manage. 
Kathleen, still caught up in competing, attempted to belittle my social media presence, unaware of the true focus and success of Janet's channel, which far exceeded her own social media reach. In a moment of revelation, I displayed the wedding rings Michael and I wore on necklaces, a practice we adopted when Janet was younger to prevent her from tampering with them. This gesture of love and unity was lost on Kathleen, who could not fathom how I, whom she viewed as less desirable, had found such happiness and success. Brian intervened during Kathleen's tirade, reprimanding her for her rudeness and acknowledging the respect he held for Michael and me. This marked a turning point, with Brian expressing remorse for Kathleen's actions, a gesture that underscored the changing dynamics within our relationships. The funeral provided a backdrop for these revelations, allowing me to introduce Michael and Janet to my parents. The encounter was bittersweet, with my mother's joy contrasted by my father's stoicism, still influenced by his favoritism towards Kathleen. Despite my mother's hope for more frequent visits, the complexity of our family relationships made such promises difficult to keep. In the days following, apprehension led me to check social media, anticipating Kathleen's potential mockery. Indeed, Kathleen had posted a photo of Janet, attempting to portray a falsely amicable encounter. This manipulation, typical of Kathleen, used Janet's popularity for her own image, blurring the truth of our strained relationship. Through these events, the strength and resilience of my family shone through, highlighting the profound contrast between the genuine connections we shared and the superficial ties that Kathleen clung to. Our journey reflected a path of healing and growth, moving beyond past hurts towards a future filled with love and authenticity. I was completely taken aback by Kathleen's unyielding pursuit of attention online. Her latest antics, showcasing a photo of my daughter Janet without consent and fabricating stories about autographs, left me frustrated. When I publicly requested the removal of the photo and called out her dishonesty, Kathleen retaliated by highlighting my comment to paint me as the jealous sibling. Her followers rallied to her defense, echoing sentiments that framed me negatively, reminiscent of a petty drama rather than a serious concern. Recognizing that direct confrontation with Kathleen would lead nowhere, I took to the Jane Leon Chanel, our family's platform, to address the situation responsibly. I clarified to our audience that the photo was shared without our permission, debunked the autograph claim, and underscored the importance of online privacy and respect. Additionally, Janet and I created a video educating children on internet safety, emphasizing the importance of not sharing someone's image without their consent. This initiative was met with overwhelming support, reinforcing the value of teaching young internet users about digital etiquette. The saga took a turn when Kathleen, undeterred by her account suspension due to her actions, reached out from a new profile. Her message, devoid of any remorse, instead conveyed a sense of entitlement and a dismissal of the serious privacy violation she committed. Kathleen's justification, that familial tie somehow granted her liberties to exploit Janet's image for her own gain, revealed a deep-seated selfishness and a lack of empathy. In response, I urged Kathleen to adopt honesty in her future social media endeavors and to respect boundaries, advising her to steer clear of fabricating content. Despite initiating the conversation, Kathleen's parting words were laden with irony, as she insisted, I was the one intruding on her life, oblivious to her own invasive actions. As Kathleen continued to curate her online presence, painting a picture of a vibrant and fulfilling life, her past behavior caught up with her. A former classmate from her prestigious school reached out to me, unveiling a pattern of manipulative behavior. Kathleen had been leveraging her connections to coerce her friends into hosting parties and allowing her to intrude on their private lives under the guise of maintaining social stature. This revelation shed light on Kathleen's manipulation, extending beyond our family disputes, affecting others in her social circle. This unexpected ally's experience highlighted a broader issue of Kathleen's influence and manipulation, prompting a reflection on the impact of social media on personal relationships and the length some go to maintain an illusion of perfection and control. The unfolding events underscored the complexities of navigating familial ties amidst the challenges of digital age interactions, revealing the importance of integrity, respect, and privacy in all aspects of life. Kathleen's manipulative tactics had become more evident as I learned not just from one, but multiple sources about her attempts to coerce friends with unspecified leverage. She threatened to expose secrets that even they couldn't recall, 
a clear sign of her desperation to maintain control and influence. Upon my advice, these friends confronted Kathleen, demanding proof of her claims, which unsurprisingly, she failed to provide. This led to a noticeable shift in Kathleen's social media presence, with her posts becoming increasingly devoid of the friends she once prominently featured, indicating their collective stand against her manipulation. As Kathleen's social circle dwindled, reflecting a stark contrast to her previously vibrant online life, I witnessed a change in my own household. Michael, typically punctual and attentive, began arriving home late from the hospital, hinting at turmoil within his professional environment. Despite my attempts to bring comfort with snacks for the overworked staff, I sensed an undercurrent of tension that nobody wished to discuss directly, leaving me feeling out of place and concerned. The cause of the hospital's unrest soon became clear. Michael, with a seriousness I had rarely seen, revealed that Brian, Kathleen's husband, had been involved in a grave medical mishap. This error, coupled with attempts to conceal it and his generally poor attitude, had led to his dismissal from the hospital. This incident not only affected Brian's career, but also had repercussions for Kathleen's family dynamics. Following these events, my mother, who had been kept at a distance by my father's directives, reached out with news that brought the entire situation full circle. Kathleen's marriage to Brian had collapsed under the strain of his professional failure and their personal conflicts, culminating in divorce. Furthermore, Kathleen found herself disowned by our family, a consequence of her actions and the toll they took on those around her. This series of events, while distressing, highlighted the importance of integrity and accountability, both in personal and professional spheres. Kathleen's fall from grace, mirrored by Brian's professional demise, served as a somber reminder of the consequences that follow when manipulation and deceit guide one's actions. Meanwhile, the solidarity shown by Kathleen's former friends in standing up to her manipulative tactics offered a glimmer of hope, showcasing the resilience of those willing to challenge unfairness and support one another in the face of adversity. The aftermath of Kathleen's actions not only affected her relationships, but also had tangible consequences for her son, Arthur, who found himself placed in a facility due to the upheaval and financial instability that ensued. This situation seemed to be a wake-up call for my father, who had always shown a soft spot for Kathleen. Despite this, when it came to taking Arthur in, neither he nor I were in a position to do so. With their own future care needs looming, my parents felt they couldn't take on the responsibility of raising their grandson. Instead, they chose to support him in a more indirect manner, offering financial assistance to the facility where Arthur was staying, choosing to remain anonymous in their contributions. My mother's tearful apologies during our conversation revealed a deep sense of regret over how Kathleen had turned out. She blamed herself for Kathleen's entitlement and manipulative tendencies, acknowledging their role in spoiling her. Despite these acknowledgments, I requested to maintain some distance from the family drama, hoping to preserve the tranquility of my own family life. In a lighter moment, Michael suggested a family outing to the amusement park, an idea that brought joy to our daughter Janet's face. She excitedly talked about riding the Ladabug coaster, and we planned to capture the fun moments on camera to share with others. Yet, in a sweet display of protectiveness, Janet declared that she didn't want the world to know just how adorable her mommy was, fearing the attention it might attract. Michael's agreement with Janet's sentiment warmed my heart, affirming the loving bond we shared as a family. This dinner marked one of the rare occasions where we were all together, discussing future plans and the simple joys of life. Despite the complexities and challenges of our extended family situation, it was these moments of unity and happiness that I cherished the most. Michael's support and Janet's innocence reminded me of the beautiful life we had built together, a life I was determined to protect and nurture, far removed from the turmoil and strife that once defined my relationship with Kathleen and my family.